The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. Today, we're going to make a device that lets you get more bang from your battery, a voltage booster that uses the power of induction. We use a lot of devices that use batteries for power. And when those devices stop working, we usually consider the batteries to be dead and we throw them away. Well, no more! As a battery gets used, its voltage slowly drops. Devices tend to need a certain minimum voltage to work. So if the batteries drop below that voltage, the device stops working. But that doesn't mean that the battery has zero volts. Our device uses inductors to let us squeeze a little more juice out of those batteries. From our last episode, we know that inductors are resistant to change. When there is a change in current, the voltage potential across the inductor increases. When you put two inductors near each other, the magnetic fields affect each other, inducing a voltage in the other inductor. This is the basic principle of how a transformer works. Transformers are made of two inductor coils that can transfer energy between them without a metallic connection. Let's look at how the transformer works in our circuit. When the current is first turned on, a small amount of voltage goes to the base of the transistor, partially opening the collector emitter channel. Some electricity can now flow through the second coil and through the transistor. As electricity flows through the second coil, its magnetic field induces a voltage in the first coil. This opens the collector emitter channel even further, allowing more electricity to flow through that channel. Eventually, the transistor is fully open and the electricity flowing through the second coil reaches a maximum. Since there's no longer a change in current, the magnetic field of the second coil shrinks and stops inducing a voltage in the first coil. This causes the collector emitter channel to begin to close. So basically, you end up with these waves of voltage, with the channel through the transistor opening and closing, with higher voltages being induced across the coils. Now, it might seem like this would create a really inconsistent output voltage, but this happens about 50,000 times per second, a frequency is so high that the change in voltage is imperceptible. Well, enough about the science, let's get to the making. We'll start by making our transformer. In the inductors episode, we learned that we get more bang for our buck, or induction for its size, with a toroidal inductor. So let's make one. We'll need a ferrite ring. You can buy one, or salvage one out of another piece of electronics, like a power supply. To make our transformer, we need to wrap our ferrite ring with two insulated wires. Choose two colors of wire and cut one piece of each two feet long. Thread the wires through your ferrite ring, leaving tails of three to six inches. Wrap the wires 10 times around the toroid. Don't let the wires overlap and try to keep them as evenly spaced as possible. Add tape to hold the wires on if need be. It'll be helpful later if you mark the pairs. Okay, I've got all my parts. Transformer, transistor, one kilo ohm resistor, switch, perf board, solid core wire in various colors, battery, and battery pack. Oh, plus a flashlight to use as a case. Neat, we can use the LED that's already built in. Time to solder. For our circuit, we need a piece of perf board that's at least five by five. Now it can be longer, but I wouldn't make it much wider because we still want it to fit within our flashlight. We'll start by placing our transistor. Note which side has the tab because that's the emitter pin. Next, we'll place our resistor. Next, we'll connect the inner pair of wires of our toroid. The blue will go to the base of the transistor and the red will go above the resistor. We need to cut a long red wire. Now we want it to be the length of the flashlight plus a little extra because it's going to go to the perf board and then up to the positive of the battery pack. But since we wanna be able to leave our circuit in the flashlight, but be able to pull our battery pack out to change the battery, we want a little extra length. That red wire is gonna to connect to where the top of the resistor and the inner toroid red wire connects. So that'll all be one big glob. Now let's connect the second pair of toroid wires the blue is going to go to the other side of the resistor on the bottom there, and the red is going to go to the collector of the transistor. Next, we need to take apart our flashlight. So 
We're going to pull the switch and the spring out. There we go. Boop. Figure out the positive and negative leads of the LED and mark them. Solder long red and black wires to LED. Make sure these wires are the length of the flashlight plus about three inches. The positive red wire of the LED is going to go to the collector of the transistor and the black negative wire of the LED is going to go to the emitter, which is the one with the tab. Next, cut a hole in the side of your flashlight big enough for your switch. Cut two wires and solder them to the switch. Thread the wires through the hole in the side of the flashlight, and we're gonna solder the shorter wire, or one of the wires, to the emitter of the transistor. Last, we need to solder in our battery pack. So here's my modified battery pack that can function off of one cell. The black negative wire is gonna go from the battery pack to the second wire that goes to the switch on the flashlight. The positive red wire of the battery is going to go to that red wire we added earlier that goes to the top of the resistor and the inner toroid wire. So those are going to get soldered in there. Put tape over those connections to prevent any shorts. If we connect our used battery straight up to the LED, the LED does not turn on. But if we put it into our battery juicer here, it works! Well, great! Make one of these and you've got a use for all of those batteries you've been meaning to send to the recycler. Now, as usual, this circuit is just the start. I want to hear all your ideas for what you can do with this circuit. I'll give you a hint. You can regulate the voltage output of this circuit by adding a Zener diode and a capacitor. I still want to hear all of your ideas and you know where to post them on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!